us understand, you know, the developments that we've seen today, the ED and CBI, the doorsteps of uh, the former finance minister. Uh, A, what are the legal remedies that are now available with, uh, with, Dr., uh, with uh, Mr. Chidambaram? Uh, come uh, tomorrow, the Supreme Court will be taking up his plea. Well, the legal remedies are with the Supreme Court. When the High Court dismisses, we are going to the Supreme Court tomorrow, and the Supreme Court tomorrow or a short date thereafter will decide. Secondly, um, the issue to be decided by the CBI and or the ED is whether Chidambaram is a flight risk between today and tomorrow, a man who has not wanted to travel abroad, whose passport can be controlled, well-known roots in society, he's a flight risk. That would be absurd to suggest that. Second question before CBI or ED would be between now and tomorrow, how many witnesses will he uh, tamper with? It's a 0708 case. All documents are frozen. Statement, all statements are, uh, of witnesses are recorded from um, uh, 17, 18, 19. So what is the tampering possible? Third is uh, cooperation. He has, do you know, been called by CBI once, I repeat, once only. Hello, can you hear me? Maybe once only. Hello. 6th of, yes, yes. of June 2018. And he went willingly. He's been called by ED about 7-8 times. He went each time. He's given 50 hours plus of evidence. So if you are neither a flight risk nor tampering and cooperating, then what is the cause of arresting between today and tomorrow? For a man, by the way, who's been on bail for 15 months. For a man who's... Uh, uh, Judgment delivered today on bail was reserved for seven months. So these are questions which the CBI and ED has to answer, that they have to make sure that it doesn't look like a persecution instead of a prosecution. But Dr. Singhvi, uh, you know, uh, good evening. This is Nantara Rai in New Delhi. What I also wanted to ask you was, and what we are being told, and for example, uh, before you, we were also interviewing Mr. Mahesh Jaitmalani. They did say that an arrest warrant is not needed if the CBI and the Enforcement Directorate uh, believe that Mr. Chidambaram can aid in their investigation. You have brought up about flight risk. You have talked about cooperation. Uh, but legally, are they within their rights to arrest Mr. Chidambaram? Of course, I never talked about arrest warrant. Of course, they are within their rights to arrest, uh, to arrest Mr. Chidambaram, which will then be shown to the public to be vendetta. Just tell me, madam, if you are not going to flee, if you've been on bail for 15 months, if you are not tampering, if you are cooperating to every summons sent to you, then what is the probable cause of arrest? Arrest is something imminent. You're about to fly, you're about to tamper, you're about to not cooperate, not come and answer questions. It has to be new arrest, no? You don't want to fill up your jails with under trials who have not been convicted. What is the liberty of the citizen if you start arresting everybody who is accused? Is accused and arrest synonymous in your dictionary? So all that I'm asking is the CBI will have to justify not only to its political masters, but to the constituency of the public at large that what is the imminence of arrest which justifies this kind of an action between now and tomorrow? Tomorrow the Supreme Court will allow him to get bail or not allow him to get bail. No, sir, but I think the problem, you know, what, what you have said, uh, there was obviously a reason why Mr. Chidambaram had to seek anticipatory bail. It is also because of the nature of the prosecution or the yes. nature of the charges that have been leveled against him, which is why we did see him seek uh, anticipatory bail. Mr. No, Singh, you know, a no. lot is also being made out in the media and we as... And we as a responsible news channel have not done that. We do not have those sensational headlines no, of uh, uh, where is he. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, accusing you at all. No, no, I'm, I'm making it clear that, you know, I want, I want you to know this. I want you to know this. We have not done any of those. Where is he? Uh, you know, his phone is off, all of that. We're not getting into all of that. Uh, the Chief Justice of India today, of course, refused the urgent hearing. Would this mean that there will necessarily be a mentioning tomorrow? Uh, this there I'm is no asking question on the of refusal, the madam. Of you must understand. Uh, Please understand. There is no question of refusal. Okay. The judgment refusing deferment came at 4 o'clock. The court said only what it could say that the earliest is tomorrow morning. And that's it. I mean, you can't really, it can't be fair to say that they refused. There are no many merits were considered. Refusal or acceptance 
interim or final will happen tomorrow morning at 10.30. We requested the learned High Court judge to defer it at 2.00 to 2.30. That deferment request was rejected one and a half hours later at 4 o'clock or 4.05 p.m. Dr. Singhvi, I also have to ask you, the High Court today said that Prima Facie, uh, the petitioner, appears to be the kingpin of the entire scam. Uh, I mean, how should one be reading into these statements, uh, uh, you know, that, that have come in in the High Court order today? As everybody knows only one way, adjectives like kingpin and lichpin are purely allegations, contentions of the prosecution. In a bail matter, there is no conviction, there is no trial, there is no finding. You know well that any word, everything said in a bail is to have no dispositive effect on trial. This is not a finding of guilt at all. It's a mere adjective to show the nature of the allegation. Now, in bail, all that you are seeing is that these three tests are not satisfied. And tomorrow, everybody who is acquitted in the trial will then be damned in the bail where adjectives are used. So people can't start jumping on these adjectives like hospital truth at all.